short presentation shows how causal identification is a crucial component of incident investigation and analysis. The first step in any investigation is to collect evidence to enable you to build a timeline to show what happened. Developing a timeline is a subjective process, hence it is best completed as a team effort. It is also a dynamic process, as the timeline may need to be adjusted as more information becomes available. It's vital that the time sequence involves all personnel directly involved with the incident to ensure accurate and credible findings. The next step is to ask why these things happened. One method for doing this is to ask why several times for each event on the timeline. An incident can have many reasons behind it and usually the cause is not the obvious one and that is what we need to find out by asking why. Let's start with a simple example. The scenario is an incident where a scaffolder on a construction site fell from the scaffold. You've been asked to investigate and analyse the incident. The technique is to keep asking why for each event in a systematic and methodical way. Remember this is a simple everyday example of continuing to ask why. Keep asking why until you can go no further. In other words, until you can't answer why anymore, it just is. This technique helps to identify all of the factors that contributed to the incident. In other words, those which affected the severity of the outcome, or whether the outcome would have happened at all. Let's look at another example, and this time we'll build the timeline. There are many different ways of recording a timeline. The one that we'll use here is drawn in PowerPoint. However, it can be just as effective to use Excel, Word or a simple pen and paper. Post-it notes or cards can be helpful as they allow you to move the individual timeline entries around during your analysis. This diagram shows the main event, which is the loss of control, and this is usually identified first. Then you need to work backwards through the preceding events and look at the sequence of events that led to the main event. Do the same after the main event and work forwards to identify what happened and how the event escalated. The key is to build up a picture of what happened. As part of the investigation we've collected information from a range of sources such as site visits, interviews and so on. This step organises the data into something useful which can communicate the incident more clearly than pages of text. Information gathering and analysis are actually carried out side by side. As the analysis progresses, further lines of inquiry open up, requiring additional information. So developing our timeline is an iterative process. The time sequence may go back into history many years. Don't underestimate resources and time required. A relatively straightforward time sequence may take half a day to compile, whereas a complex time sequence can take several days and cover many walls of a large conference room. The time boundaries depend on the terms of reference we set as part of the planning of the investigation. For this example, the scenario is a gas leak in a refinery that leads to an explosion. 
The main event is therefore the gas leak in the refinery, which escalates to an explosion. So the first preceding event could be instruction issued to open a valve on the gas line to commence export operations. What happened next is that the operator opened the wrong valve and gas was directed into the wrong equipment. The emergency alarm system failed to operate and gas was released. The emergency shutdown valve failed to operate and the escaping gas encountered an ignition source and then an explosion occurred. We've now established what happened and illustrated it on a timeline. Then you have to start asking why for each step on the timeline, so we can identify the causes of the event. For example, why did the operator open the wrong valve? Answer, he did not receive sufficient training. Next, on the same event, you could ask why. Why did the operator not receive sufficient training? Answer, because there's no training program for operators. Then you would ask why. Why is there no training program? And so on. Once you've asked all of the why questions and can go no further, move on to the next event. The emergency alarm system failed to operate. Why did the alarm system fail? Answer due to an electrical fault. Why was there an electrical fault? Answer, because it had not been maintained correctly. Why had it not been maintained correctly? You continue to ask why. When we reach the main event, the release of gas, you have to keep asking why. Why was there a gas leak? The answers to this question lie with the preceding events, i.e. operator opens wrong valve, lack of training, lack of supervision, etc. Now that the main event has taken place, we have to look at the events following the main event as it escalates. Moving along the timeline, why did the ESDV fail to operate? Answer, due to a faulty valve gate. Why was the valve gate faulty? Answer, lack of maintenance, and so on. Next, why was there an ignition source? Answer, because an operator left the engine of a vehicle running. Why did he leave the engine running? Answer, because he failed to follow safety instructions. Why did he fail to follow safety instructions? Answer, because he had not read the safety instructions. Why had he not read the safety instructions? And so on. Keep asking why until you can go no further. In this way, you can ask why to identify all the factors which could have contributed to the incident. Keep asking why until you can't answer why anymore. It just is. Having conducted this part of the investigation, you are now in a position to be able to analyse the information to identify what contributed to the incident most and what the immediate and root causes were. You should study each box on the timeline and each of the Y boxes containing causes to determine the contribution made. For each entry on the diagram, ask yourself, if I remove this box, would the incident still have happened with the same consequences? 
If the answer is yes, the item contributed to the incident. For example, if the operator had followed the safety instructions, would the event still have occurred? The answer is that the gas leak would still have occurred, but the explosion may have been avoided. So, failing to follow the safety instructions contributed to the incident. It is one of the causes. Some of the causes will be immediate. And other causes will be underlying root causes. It's important that the investigation identifies and corrects the root causes as well as the more obvious immediate causes. In this short presentation, we've seen how causal analysis is a methodology used to solve problems at their roots, rather than just fixing the obvious. The benefits of causal analysis are that it uncovers the relationships between causes of an incident and symptoms of problems, makes sure that corrective actions are targeted at the actual causes that contributed to the incident, particularly the root causes, and provides tangible evidence of causes and effective solutions. As a method, it is easy to understand and communicate, and therefore it is easy to involve all personnel directly involved with the incident. Remember, the timeline may need to be adjusted as more information becomes available and complex time sequences can take several days to develop. If organisations fail to carry out causal analysis after an incident, then it's likely that they will fail to make long-lasting improvements or learn any lessons from the incident, and hence prevent similar incidents. Thank you for your attention. More information can be found in RISTEC's Incident Investigation and Analysis module.